Hey everyone, today we're going to be replacing and setting up throttle cables on this V-Star 1100. As you can see, it binds and we're going to show you why there's going to be some surprises as we do this project. So let's get started. I've since moved this piece up to the top of the carburetor just so it doesn't get jammed down in the works down there. It doesn't belong up here like this, but you can see where it broke. I'm going to start off by removing the mirror with a 17. You see this mirror loosens reverse thread. I know a lot of times in my videos I talk about Phillips and JIS interchangeably. A lot of these heads with JIS with the little dot annotating them, they've long since been ruined by Phillips screwdrivers, so I use Phillips on them and I replace them with hex. This one, however, has only ever been removed by me and only once to put on these grips, so it's still proper JIS, so I'm using a JIS bit to remove this. Same type of JIS screw exists here on the bottom as you move the cable out of the way you can see it and not having a lot of luck being able to hit it so I'm gonna have to loosen the brakes to get clear access to it so I'm just taking a hex key and loosening the two bolts just a little bit that secure the brakes onto the bar just enough that I can wiggle the brakes out of the way a reattempt is now tried on that screw but it's really on there I feel like if I keep trying to turn I'm just gonna tear up that screw head so I'll try a little bit of light percussion on the screw, hoping that the light percussion will break up the seizure on the threads. As I realized this would be a problem, I rotated this back up and put the other screw back in, tightening it down. So I just have an easier angle to work on that bottom screw. I'm trying to spray some oil into that screw and I realize it's probably futile because the threads are all the way on the other side and looking at the other screw, I know this, but I figure at least I'll give it a shot and the screw's in so tight, it's probably not letting any oil pass the head. And one more round of percussion is attempted. And turning is attempted, but I could see the metal fatiguing around the bit. It doesn't look like this is going to happen with a screwdriver. I know from looking at the setup that if I could get the head off, there's a good amount of stud to work with to pull the stud from the other side. So first, I'm going to drill a small pilot right in the middle, and that'll set the bit for the subsequent bits that'll go wider to take the head of the screw off. And that was a good pilot. And that would just go in wider really, slightly deeper, but mostly just wider into the screw. And this is basically so the head will detach from the stud, giving it oil. And it's also heating it up too, I think. The stud, which is helping to release that from the other side. Because it's gonna heat and then it's gonna cool. And that last bit should just knock the head clear off. A perfect screw head removal with no damage to the part. So now I can remove the top screw. And while it's not time to separate the shells yet, I just want to do a quick inspection to make sure that there's no binding. So it looks like we're okay from the top and the bottom. There is a stud in it. It's not really supposed to be in there. But it doesn't look like it's going to be a problem. I'll just swing everything back into place as it should be now. Everything here is looking good. Yeah, yeah, this clearance. This is a friction cruise control. I'm just going to remove this screw here that I've already loosened. And that'll separate this bar. Just get it out of the way. Put this screw back because it's just asking to be lost. I pre-loosened this fitting for the other cable. So now I can just turn it with my hands anti-clockwise. And as we do that. The cable continues to slacken so I can push it down over that ramp. Now come around and remove that cable from the spool. Now this cable's detached. This other cable was already detached because as you can see, it's completely broken. On the underside is a flat head that supports one of the cables. Removing that flat head now, that bracket is part of the cable. Going around the other side, I pull right down like this. I can now remove the end of this cable right from the grip same type of fitting just pull a little bit up spin it up straight and pull it out of the notch you don't really see it on camera but you'll see it when it's removed and here comes the second one now pulling it out in the same way and now the grip could come right off the bike here it is here's those notches now i could separate these two covers keep in mind there's like a stud in there so i have to pull it off straight there we go so this back plate is removed without any damage, just needs to be washed, obviously. 
Now I could spray some oil directly on the threads and let it soak for a bit. I'll use a pair of vice grips and grab a good amount of the stud and just give it a little bit of left and right turn, just working it left and right, slowly bringing out the amount of angle that I'm turning it until I'm confident it's broken free. Now I'm just going to hold it straight up and lock it in so I could turn this stud off because now I feel like it's been broken free. It's undamaged. We could just remove it like a screw. No damage successfully removed. Mission accomplished. Here's a stud out of the bike. And here's how it would have seated in normal operation if the bottom screw could have been removed without any issue. And I just want to give this cable a test. I push and pull from both sides. I feel no resistance. The cable itself is just fine. Testing this cable. I could push and pull from this side. I feel no resistance whatsoever in this other cable. We're not replacing this one. The cable we are replacing screws into this block. So the entire cable is going to need to be removed from the bike in order to proceed. Some of the trim up front here is going to need to be removed or deflected to get to this. Remove the tank grommet and the key. The grommet on this side. I have two of these cable looms behind here that I remove. They're three cable holders. Screws up front also secure this trim. I've since replaced the original screws with hex. Like I do for a lot of screws on this bike. And I remove this cover that's on the low side, which admittedly I can't do because the camera's in the way, as we see here, but I do remove it. I had a cable tie here holding all this together. I don't know if that was entirely necessary, but now I'm able to pull that cable through. It does get caught on stuff as you do pull it through, so you got to watch for that. At this point, I'm pulling back through from the other side, through the triple tree. And it's out. That's it. Next, pull everything down so it just hangs to the floor. Spun anti-clockwise, this cable is now drawn out of the shell all the way till it falls out. And that's it. This cable is now removed. All the way to the other end, we see the broken piece deinstalled. Took that one good screw I moved to Ace. Confirmed M5.8. Nice match, stainless steel, hex, same size for the threads, fits nicely in the shell. We're going to go with this. We'll take two, and we're out the door. I'll admit, I wasn't expecting this, trying to find a four inch over cable. I was looking at JMP, $48, but would take four weeks to deliver. Seemed like a long time. Cheaper option was Amazon and quicker, but when I got the cable, it didn't fit. Tried out eBay. Exact model, they said it would fit, and then I got home, and I took it out of the bag, and I put the cable up to my cable, and it was like a foot shorter, and I took a picture and showed it to the guy, he refunded my money, completely fed up with all this. So I'm hereby declaring an emergency repair for a part, this is going to be a non-standard procedure. So I heated and removed the end from the new Chinese cable, heated and removed the end from my old cable, also removing the nub on the end. I happened to have a crimp set, so I was able to crimp this fitting onto my old cable. I applied just a little bit of epoxy across all these areas. Then I applied some marine grade heat shrink across the whole work area. This is a solid repair. It should function as good as new. These cable ends from Dorman have arrived. I'm not going to be using them as advertised. This one I've already worked on. They're Imperial, so I've already turned this one down to fit the metric bike. I'm going to measure it to see exactly how much. So this is 6.24 millimeter, and here's one I haven't touched, 6.30. So metric sizes, I dropped it down six hundredths of a millimeter. We could also see that the hole is a bit small for the cable. So I'm going to go out to the garage, and I'm going to bring the diameter of the hole out just a little bit to accommodate it. And now it fits just fine. It could actually go through a bit out the other side, but it also bows out a little bit in the middle, and that's what I'm looking for. We're going to put some flux in the middle of this now. And now we're going to pack the middle of it with some solder. And I'm just clipping it to fit. Just pack the solder in. These vice grips are on ever so gently. It's just a heat sink and a support. Initially, we're going to heat this up. And that first round of solder and flux is going to bubble up. It's going to mix with whatever oil is in the end of that cable over there. It's going to smoke probably. It's going to smoke definitely. Even catch on fire as you see. And then I'm going to add more solder and work all that garbage out so that we could actually get solder that's going to bind to the cable and the brass 
So this is just the first round to kind of remove impurities. So it's on its side. I mean, hot enough, it could just pour right out. There's nothing stopping it. And that's the goal. In the second round, which I didn't record, it was poured on its side until it poured out the bottom. And as it dried, it left a plug like a sprig when you cast in a bullet. And this is what we're left with. And now the solder is clean and all the way through. And the cable is in there tight. All I need to do is cut the sprig, sand both sides down, and we're golden. So now I'll clip that little piece of end cable off, and we'll bring it right out to the garage. Here we are with the side sanded down, inspected, ready for installation. Before we get underway, both cables can be lubricated. I'm not going to use a special tool. This is how we're going to do it. I'm going to punch a small hole into this small bottle. Now I'm going to bring that hole out just slightly with another tool. This first cable, I'm able to make a watertight seal in this small bottle, so I'm going to push it in just like this. And now I'm going to suspend it on the handlebars using cable lube. For this demonstration for the camera, I'm going to spray in a lot more than I need. I could actually pull the bottle out a bit so that the height will be lower, but it was easier for the camera. So yeah, I wouldn't use this much, but I'm going to. So we could see here, bubbles are coming up because it's submerged under the level. And I'm actually going to move the cable on the other side up and down. I sped this up uh, four times the speed just so you could see, but the bubbles are coming as I do that, and I'll let it sit, you see the level slowly dropping. And now we can see that there's lubricant coming out the bottom of the cable. So the cable is lubed without any special tool, and I'll be sure to make as much mess as possible as I disconnect this bottle from the cable. It's a wonderful job. And that's it, using gravity rather than pressure, it does the same job without the tool. Taking the cable that was repaired, I'm gonna do the same thing, and I'm showing it being screwed in the bottle. In actuality, I'm gonna wrap a couple of wraps of tape around the threads to seal it. And that repaired cable is now lubricated and can be installed back in. I put the actual metal cable in through first and clear it. And this whole entire cable will need to be spun around the shell. I don't want it tightened all the way in. There needs to be room for at least one rotation to set the direction back towards where it's going to be dressed into the bike. A little out of order. I'm showing the front shell first only because it's easier to see. I haven't started with the back cable yet at all, but the camera's right there. So I'm putting that cable in a position on the grip. We can see that position from the top, slides in, and then trying to push that slack down back in the cable a bit. I could bring the shell around this area for the cable, and now it's in the groove. Now I'll do the back one. It slides in the back shell, and we got to get that flathead screw reinstalled because that's what holds that cable in. I'm just going to hand tighten it for now. Revisit with a screwdriver later. And now I'm going to pull that cable slack out so I can work with it. Bring it around in position. Around up top again so I can seat it into the grip. And there it is. And we're going to try and bring that slack back down. And as I bring both shells together, I still got to get that electrical cable around that notch on the bottom. And just sort of press it in and snaps in that notch. It's a little finicky. There we go. And making sure that nothing's pinched, I can just hold these shells together and we're done. A gentle throttle turning test can be done, but make sure that you don't bend the cables if they bind up. Here's one of the new screws I bought at Ace with anti-seize on it. I'll be installing those now, but just snug, not tightened down, because we're going to have to come back and adjust all this later once the bike is fully assembled. I'll reconnect the linkage from my cruise control and install that screw. For the cruise control now. One more quick test to bring this cable into the all the way in position and then I'm gonna put some tape over it to protect the cable. I'm gonna make sure it doesn't bind for the next step. Since I only removed one cable it's easy I know which way I'm gonna run it so I'm running it parallel with the existing cable. Take care through the entire procedure that there are no sharp bends of this cable that will immediately cause irreparable damage to the cable. Two cable loom connects right here. Put that in now. So the cable is now on the low side of the bike, and it looks like it is dressing very nicely with the other cables. So everything is looking good. 
will be able to proceed onward. So I'll run it up here into the frame by the car to meet the other cable. And then I'll bring it down roughly into position. I'll skip ahead to where I was attempting to connect and I realized that the old bend had significantly more adjustment than the new one and I did not cut any thread. I had to remove the entire thing, but when I did, I put more thread. I also re-terminated it, putting the cable uh, bend sideways instead of straight so it would hold on tighter. And then I reinstalled everything to get me to this point. This is just a pre-check before I tighten anything down. I have a lot more adjustment and the soldered cable no longer goes through the cylinder, it comes out the side. So I got my 10 mil and I'm gonna start tightening things down. And as I do, I'm gonna check and make sure that everything's looking good and adjust as necessary. This one, there's a little bit of binding here. So I have to turn this up with the 10 mil to loosen things, get everything in position. This one I could bring down no problem. With the adjustments I still have available up top, this is working very nice, not tight, just a tiny hint of slack, but no binding. Now I'll reapply this double cable loom right here. Does not include the clutch. Here we are. Now I got a triple cable loom. This does include the clutch. I'm just gonna place this right here. Then I have another one. I'm just gonna snap into place right here. It's another triple. And finally, that side cover goes back on. Everything now at this point is pretty much what you would see in one of my videos where the gas tank would go back on after some carburetor work. I'll include a link in the top right corner. Only after the bike is fully assembled and you're able to sit on it properly can you adjust all of these components that were moved into their proper position and tighten down all of these screws making sure the position feels natural and everything operates properly when you're done. And that's it. That's the general maintenance and replacement of throttle cables to include an emergency repair of a throttle cable, which was unexpected initially in this project. I hope you found it enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?